Let's do the last game, Sean, before we do some, a quick mailbag here. Last game, and I know this one is for Sean because this is one he wants to talk about because this was his upset pick. USC plays at Stanford. Now, this is a – let's set the stage a little bit for this one, Sean, because USC obviously is now is the new media darling. Yeah. They're coming off of a 66-14 to 14 win over Rice in which they had how many defensive touchdowns did they store in this game, Sean? I believe it was like, what, three? They had yeah. three pick sixes in this game. One of them being a 93-yard pick six, which meant Rice was driving. <laughs> so uh, Rice, obviously uh, led by former Stanford offensive lineman, uh, or head coach. Their head coach is led by former Stanford offensive line coach, Mike Bloomgren. And uh, they took it to Rice a little bit last week. Rice, though, however, is just not very good, if we're going to be completely honest with you. Rice was a 4-8 and eight team last year that lost to Texas 58 to nothing. Uh, their wins last year were over UAB, crazy win, and then and uh, lost, but lost to Charlotte. They beat Southern Miss, Texas Southern. Uh, not a real good team, if we're being completely honest with you. Uh, yeah. They were two and three the year before that in the COVID year, and then they were three and nine the year before that. Stanford is a team I still have no clue who they're going to be, no clue. Yeah, because what you and I talked about last year was. Stanford was literally two completely different teams in the first half of the year and the second half of the year. Yeah. I mean, the first half of the year last year with Stanford, they were four and two, three and two, excuse me. They had beaten USC convincingly at USC, had bad losses to Kansas State and UCLA, but then they beat Vanderbilt convincingly, beat Oregon, and they could score. I mean, their offense was good. In the second half of the year, they were terrible and got blown yeah. out by everybody. I mean, yeah. literally – their last four losses were by 45, 21, 30, and 31. You know, it's just – I don't know who Stanford is. Yeah. But the one thing we know is this is going to be one of the few games all year that they're going to be healthy. And so – They the always beat come USC the, early. Yes. When they're yes. healthy. So you have, you have USC winning, Sean, or Stanford winning, Sean. So talk to me about okay. how you see this game going down. Other than just we hate USC, which is – I'm with you. Uh, main reason. <laughs> yeah. Why do you see Stanford winning this game? Because I don't think people realize that Tanner McKee is a good quarterback. Yeah. That they have some really good – oh, they're – oh, man, I'm forgetting the name, 84, the tight end. Uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, ben um, – why am I forgetting his last name? I'm You're a set. You're a set. Yeah. And – Yo, and Wilson and Higgins are good veteran receivers. It's like it's not like Stanford's walking in without talent. Right. They have offensive talent. The problem is they played Colgate last week mm -hmm. and they gave up 142 yards rushing. Right. So the defensive line is going to be a problem. But yep. USC isn't about to line up and take advantage of that. That's right. not what they do. They're not about to pound the ball. And if they do pound the ball, that gives Stanford a chance to stay in the game because mm -hmm. what Stanford has actually is also some decent defensive backs. This, yeah. is, this is why this matchup, you ever seen a team that no matter what you think about their program, they have a psychological advantage yes. over a certain program? Yes. And this, is, this is Stanford with USC. Yes. We've seen David Shaw slide as a program and Stanford slide as a program, but they are always ready to line up and believe we can bully these dudes. Yeah. We know we can bully them. We might not be good enough to beat everybody else, but every year they line up and believe that they can push USC around. They went and they're nine and five against USC beginning in 2009. Absolutely. And even as bad as Stanford has been the last several years, They've won two of the last three against USC, and both of yeah. them were double were fourteen point wins. Yeah, they weren't close. Right. They weren't close. So Caleb Williams, yeah, the offense was great. They looked good, but they didn't play anybody. Right. They didn't play anybody. They'll get a little push this week. They rushed for two hundred eight last week, but seventy. I think it was like seventy eight of those yards were quarterbacks. Quarterback quarterbacks, players. absolutely. And Caleb Williams will probably end up being the difference if USC wins. He'll be the difference, being able to throw the ball and run the ball. But don't sleep on Stanford. It's not like Stanford. This is not a program that is void of talent. 
They have two wide receivers that probably will make it to the NFL. They have a quarterback that has a chance to make it to the NFL. And we have to get the name of this darn tight end, man. It is irritating. Urasek, Benjamin Urasek. Urasek, yes. Yeah. If you watched the Notre Dame game, you saw how talented Urasek yeah. was. Right? Yeah. They have talent. And the one thing they always have, offensive linemen, tight ends, and a running game. Yep. And if they can get it going – they're going to cause problems for USC, and they'll go play action. And USC can have a great game, and Wilson and Higgins, they'll have good games as That's well. That's going to be the key. Can, yeah. can can Stanford protect the quarterback? If they yeah. can protect their quarterback, they will score on USC. And I'll tell you something else. Okay, it was it was it was Colgate, right? So yeah, right, it was Colgate. Colgate. Cool. So, so keep that in mind. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but the reality is, uh, it's Colgate. Colgate. They're not. Even, are they? Are they Ivy League? Or are they in the other one? They're an Ivy League team. Correct? Ivy League, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So they're they're an Ivy League team, and and honestly, Sean, they're not a very good Ivy League team. They went no. five and six last year. They lost to Boston College fifty-one to nothing. Okay, they're not good. I understand that, but what I'll say is. Stanford couldn't run on anybody last year, even teams that were terrible. And they ran for 169 yards against Colgate, which isn't like knock your socks off, but EJ Smith went 11 for 118 yards. And so, I mean, it may not seem like a lot, but, you know, for them, it kind of is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's actually a good performance against them. If they can have some semblance of balance in this game, just some, just, just make USC think you might actually run the ball relatively okay and not suck at it. I think that's going to be a key too. Because if they just come out and they think they're just going to throw it all over the yard against USC and not try at least at all run, you know, <laughs> I don't know of how that's going to go. Because then USC is going to pin their ears back and go after them. I don't know who. Look, I just this matchup for me was so easy. When I saw, when I was like, "Oh, Stanford plays USC. Oh, that's my, yeah. that's my, that's easy." Yeah, like that because this is about matchups and a team just flat out believing, no yeah. matter how good or bad we are, we know we're better than them. Yeah, it's the same way. For yeah. some reason, historically, David Shaw has been able to get his teams ready to play Stanford and Oregon. Right. Like it doesn't matter where they are. They believe, yeah. They yeah. compete, and they and Sean, teams. I was, I kept, I wasn't sitting right. The Colgate thing wasn't sitting right with me, and that's why I said, are they in the other league? The other academic league is the Patriot League, Patriot Lehigh league, and Lafayette. Yeah. They're actually in the Patriot League, which makes it even worse because the Patriot yeah. League is not as good as the Ivy League. Uh, but yes, the, Sean, I mean, could could you argue that this game is going to determine how long David Shaw stays at Stanford? And here, here's my case for this because if you lose this game at home, yeah, it says a lot about where you are, you know. And and you've got Oregon and Washington, Washington and Oregon coming up next on the road. You got to play at Notre Dame. You got to play at UCLA. You got to play at Utah. You got to play at Cal. They got to play BYU at home. You got to play yeah. Oregon State at home. Like literally, if they lose this game, they could conceivably lose every other game that they play. I'm not mm -hmm. saying they will. But every other game that they play is losable. If they're not good enough to beat USC at home in game two of Lincoln Riley's tenure, even if, especially if they don't keep it close, then I think he's done. Because mm. I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know that they can beat a lot of those teams. If they're not good enough to, to, to hang with USC at home in game two, you know, I mean, am I supposed to believe that they're going to go on? I think Washington's going to be a much improved team this year. I really do. I think that the problem was coaching. Yeah. 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 I, I like Kalen DeBoer. I mean, the last time we saw Kalen DeBoer and, and Michael Penix together, he looked great. And guess what? Michael Penix without Kalen DeBoer was terrible. I mean, straight terrible. But the two years, so in 2021, Michael Penix threw four touchdowns and seven interceptions. That was without Kalen DeBoer. The year before in six games, he averaged about almost 300 yards a game if you take out the game he got injured in. 14 touchdowns and four interceptions looked really good. And then in the one game at Washington with him against – again, it was against a MAC team. 
He went yeah. 26 of 39 for 345 yards, four touchdowns and no picks. He looked like the Michael Penix from the 22-2020 season. And I think a lot of that's because I think Kalen DeBoer is a really good coach and he's got good weapons around him. Like Washington's not going to be the – Washington was not as bad last year as their record showed. Yeah. Their coach lost that team and he wasn't a good head coach. Yeah. Right, Kalen DeBoer is not walking into a depleted roster, and I think Terrell Bynum is going to look back and be like, "Dude, I shouldn't have left Washington. I should have stayed at Washington. Like, I made a mistake going to USC with all these other guys. That Washington offense is rolling. Then yeah. they got to play at Oregon. You know, then Oregon State at home. Oregon State and State's a good football team this year. I mean, really good football team this year. At Notre Dame, home against Arizona State, at UCLA, home against Washington State, at Utah, at Cal, home against BYU. Yeah, it it could get ugly for them. If, and I, think if, that, I think this is the challenge for Lincoln Riley. This is when Lincoln Riley really finds out what's in his locker room. Mm -hmm. Like a game like this. Like he really yeah. finds out, right? Because he's trying to establish culture, right? And this is the type of game where things can be going good. Yep. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, here we go again. Because right. these yep. kids have been in those games. He's trying to change the culture too. Yeah, that's what like, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But those kids still have the memory of his Stanford. Here we go again. Well, with we Stanford. saw that with Brian Kelly and Notre Dame. It took Brian Kelly till year three when they beat Stanford before the culture changed. That's why Notre Dame lost so many games his first two years that they had no business losing. Yeah. Because the culture was like Brian Kelly may not have had that mentality of here we go again, but the players did. Yeah. And so when Pitt started to come back, they would lose. When Tulsa did make things, they would get dejected. When Navy started running on them, they would basically tap out. I mean, it was that culture. How quickly can Lincoln Riley change that? And I think we talked a lot about it from the Stanford angle, but the USC angle is interesting too, Sean, because if you can kind of come out and smack the team that's been giving you problems in recent years yeah. on the road, it's like, you know what? Hey, coach, coach knows what he's doing. We need to keep listening to him. So this is a huge game. This could be the end of David Shaw or the resurgence of David Shaw. Because if they can beat USC, it says, okay, they're now using their weapons because they have – it's not – Stanford's not going to stink because they don't have players. Right. They're going to stink because their culture has become really just – the they're the most apathetic-looking football team I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, I've never seen a group of players go through the motions more than I've seen Stanford do that the last two years. Like, just like, okay, we're here and whatever. And I got to, you know, whatever. Just yeah, we got some parties planned tonight, so let's just do what we do. And, you know, I'll still have that Stanford degree. That's all that really matters. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's I've never seen a team with as much talent as they have play yeah. as bad as they have the last three years. It's really weird. With quarterbacks, I mean, Davis Mills was a third-round pick, even with all the injuries. Yeah. If he's not injured, he's a first-round pick. Tanner McKee, people I say, agree. is a first-round pick. It's like – Notre Dame's winning 10, 11 games. Ian Book and Stanford's going three and nine and four and eight with Davis Mills and Tanner McKee. Davis Mills was like, what, five star? Yeah. When he came and out? When he was healthy, he played yeah. like one. You know, it, it's just the weirdest thing. Weirdest thing. So this is going to be a very, very intriguing game, Sean.